my strategy to always ace any general aptitude section for any exam. First, numbers never lie. Second, a good guess with some amount of courage always adds value. And third, always know things to avoid. A very good day, all of you. So over here, I am going to give you a brief idea about how you can score maximum marks in the general aptitude section, right? In the minimum amount of time because honestly speaking if you have a lot of time in your hands you can easily you know do the questions from general aptitude but let's say if you have 10 15 minutes how do you maximize your score how do you score at least 10 to 15 marks you know in your csi net exam or how do you maximize your score in the gate examination because trust me in the gate examination particularly if you are from the chemical sciences you would not have much time to attend the general aptitude if your subject questions um, you have spent a lot of time the subject questions or you know how to solve the subject questions of course let's say if you don't have any idea about how to solve the subject questions then of, you know you you would have a lot of time for general aptitude all right so let me just give you an idea on how in minimum amount of time you can you know score maximum marks so i have taken a lot of questions from december 2016 and like that you can see for any um, question for that matter even for the gate exam or even for the csn exam you can take up any question paper from any year and you will see the same thing okay now for example if you look at this question it is it looks to be very complex or it it looks like if you see this question it will take a lot of time but there's something which i always um, um you know try to attempt when i'm at uh, when i'm basically giving any exam and there's a general aptitude section is to solve numerical abilities so like i said the first point that i wanted to make was that numbers never lie so whenever you solve numerical questions you will not get any negative marking and there is something which i call plugging in the answers so there are some questions where you can plug in the answers uh, and get get to the correct answer what i mean by that is basically plugging in the options so for example if you get such questions now it says this this is something a man sells three articles a b and c and gains 10 percent on a 20 percent on b and so on and so forth what are they asking what is this net loss or gain on the sale of all the articles now you know if instead of solving it using equations x y and z it might become complicated and it might take you two three minutes or even more depending upon your you know mathematical ability to solve this question but let's say you just assume that whenever you get percentage questions you take a random value which which can be easily you know divided into its percentage for example the question says a man sells three articles a b and c okay and gains 10 percent on a 20 percent on b and 10 percent on c and loses 10 percent on c so if i say that the a a article is priced at 100 rupees okay the b one is priced at let's say um again uh, 100 rupees okay let's consider this to be also 100 and let's say the C is also priced at 100 rupees. So what is the question saying? That he gains 10% on A. So now the 10% of 100 is what? 10 rupees. So this is 110. The selling price of this article is 110. Because if you see the question is asking something related to the selling prices. Okay. So it he gains 10% on A. He or she basically gains 10% on A. 20% on B. So this is 120 rupees. Okay. Because 20% of 100 is 120 and 10% on C. So I've just taken a random value uh, because I don't want to solve the equations in the form of X, Y, and Z. Okay, sorry, this should not be 110. This should be 90 because he loses 10% on C. So if the cost price is 100, he has lost 10% on C. So this will be 90 rupees. Now how it becomes easy is, now I have taken these random values. Okay, I've just taken, considered 100, 100, 100. Depending upon the question, you might need to tweak these values because what the question says, he breaks even when combined selling prices of A and C are considered. Okay, so selling price of A is what? 110 rupees and selling price of C is what? 90. So total becomes 200 rupees. So the cost price is also 200. You can see 100 over here, 100 over here and the selling price is also 200. So this makes sense. So this equation is satisfied if I take A value as 100 and C value as 100 that they break even. Okay, now what is the question saying? That when you combine B and C, uh, there is basically a 5% profit. Okay, there's a 5% profit. So basically, if you combine B and C, so B is what? Selling price is 120 and C is 90. So this will be because this will become equal to 210, right? And the total price is how much? 200. So you know 5% of 200 is what? 210. So this equation is also satisfied. So if you take all the three values as 100, you have satisfied both the equations. 
and now what is the question saying what is the net loss or gain on the sale of articles so the total cost of the articles is what 300 rupees and the total if you just add up all of these this will become 320 so the selling price is 320 so there is a 6% gain so the correct answer over here is option number 4 okay so th this is one of the one of the ways where you just plug in some random values over here you did not plug in the options as such but you just use some random values so as to make these equations um, you know easier to interpret so that is one strategy that i always follow and has worked for me now if you like i also i'm going to show you other questions also but in case um, you want uh, to see more such questions or have certain doubts i have a free live class today at 9 30 pm today at 9 30 the link is in the description and to use this but or to basically to unlock this class because it's a free class you have to use this referral code SETHI. okay so the link is in the description and the class is today it's a live class anyway going to the next question now this is a typical question where you will plug in the values okay so the question says a woman starts shopping with rupees x and y and spends rupees 3.5 okay and is left with 2y and 2x basically let's say if the person started with um let's say um, um you know uh, 10 rupees and 20 paise okay then they would be left with 40 rupees like it should be something like that so it, what is it saying that y should be double so paise should be double okay it should be 2y and 2x basically this value will double and move over here and this value will double and move over here okay so that is what the question is saying so what is the amount she started with again some of you if you use this approach of you know applying equations x and y you might get the answer but it might take a little more time or sometimes it is difficult to interpret but now what you do is see the amount she started with so basically it's saying that after spending three and a half rupees okay after spending three and a half rupees and it is given the amount she has started with now just think about it just in your mind take the double values so double of 20 double of 24 is what 48 okay so this should be somewhere around 48 but if you see if you subtract three and a half rupees this will become close to 44 but you need over here 48 because on the right hand side this is 24 so this needs to be 48 so this cannot be the answer okay then if you move over here 64 double is what 128 that is not possible because if you subtract uh, three and a half rupees from 28 this will be somewhere around i think uh, 25.14 right so again this also cannot be the possible because over here we should have 128 double of 64 and over here also you can see it is 42 it should be 84 so the only option that is making sense is 32.14 because if you subtract three and a half over here it will be 28 point something which is actually double of 14. so over here also you just need to go through the options and you have been able to solve the question both these questions can be solved under one minute okay now let's go to the next question again percentage form so i i'm showing you that these are all questions from december 2016 and always try to attempt the numerical questions because they never end up giving you the uh, wrong value because see subjective statement like questions they are prone to wrong interpretations but numer in numerical questions generally um, you know uh, you do not have any interpretation as such so if you look at this question also a mine supplies 1000 10000 tons of copper ore containing containing an average of 1.5% of copper now for you they have made it easy because they have given 10000 tons so converting it into percentage form is not difficult because 1.5% of 10000 is what 150 okay so 150 uh, is the weight of copper now what is it saying the smelter extracts 80% of the copper so 80% of 150 is what 120 okay so what is the production of copper in tons per day it is equal to 120 okay super simple question numerical based now let's move to the next one um wheat production of a country over a number of years is shown what which year recorded highest percentage reduction in the production over the previous year okay so you can see that always look at the gaps over here so this is a gap of five this is also a gap of five this is also a gap of five this is also a gap of five so basically every year the production has been decreasing by five units okay or five metric tons but you always know that if we have a smaller value from which we will subtract five then the percentage is going to be higher right so if for example if we add to 10 we add five the what is the it what is the basically you can say this becomes 15 right but if you add 100 uh, to 
if you add 5 to 100 this becomes only 105 okay so over here you can see there's only a 5% increase so basically the smaller the value and if the if the reduction is same and the value is small then the percentage will be higher so what is the question saying highest percentage reduction so of course the highest per percentage reduction will be from 35 to 30 because the value is low if you go from 50 to 45 it is just 10% reduction like that but over here it will be close to um, you can say close to 20% right so that is why the correct answer is 2004 so always try and attempt these numerical based questions again there is one more question where you can plug in the values <clears throat> so the question says that the dimensions of a floor are 18 into 24 uh, what is the smallest number of identical square tiles that will pave the entire floor without the need to break any tile okay so from 24 into eight, uh, 18 if you do um, this should be equal to 432 yes okay this is equal to 432 now what is the question saying that what is the sum smallest number of identical square tiles that will pave the entire floor okay so basically uh, uh, you know what you need to do is let's say the question is asking the smallest tiles so always go with six because six is the smallest number now what we need to do is we need to find that if we divide this area 432 by 6 do we get a square value because because in because if you want to have square tiles then you know that the area of a square is what uh, like whatever is the uh, length of one side square of that okay so basically what i'll do is if i divide 432 by 6 so this is equal to 72 okay now we know that 72 should be the area of one square if you want six tiles which will completely cover the entire floor but uh, if you see that 72 is basically um, not a square of any value of any whole number basically so we can cancel this option out if you go with the next smaller number that is 8 so if you divide 432 by 8 um, this would be equal to um, this will be equal to 8 um, I mean 50 uh, 50 50 um, 4 right I think so uh, yeah it should be 54 yeah so this is equal to 54 so 54 is also not a square of a whole number then we go to the next highest value that is 12 so if you divide 432 by 12 uh, this should be 360 30 and 30 and 36 right this should be 36 420 36 yeah so 36 is basically a square of 6 okay it's, it's a square of 6 so basically the area of the uh, uh, so basically the answer is 12 over here uh, okay, now there's a question on uh, something which I call good guess. Okay, not blind guess, but a good guess. So imagine this is some question uh, which says to determine the number of parrots in a population and ecolo an ecologist captures 30 parrots and puts rings around their necks and releases them. Okay, now after a week he captures 40 parrots and finds 8 of them have the ring. So he, again, first he takes 30 parrots and you know puts a ring around them and then like basically he uh, leaves them and then again captures after a week and he captures 40 parrots out of which only 8 have the ring okay that means if you talk about this 8 out of 40 this is what 20 percent so basically when he captured again after a week only 20 percent parrots had a ring around them now what is it saying what approximately is the parrot population now I know that of course there are a lot of things that are working over here because earlier he captured 30 parrots earlier he or she captured 30 parrots right and then again 40 parrots so there might be a, a good uh, you know equation to calculate the population okay but you might not be aware of it but if you just use your common sense you would come to know that okay if 20% of the parrots have this ring and 40 parrots were captured and only 20% had the rings so that means even if I even if I consider that only 20% of the parrots had the ring out of this, just a rough estimate. Okay, just think about it in a very rough way. Then then there should be at least 200 parrots, like basic thing. Like if it if if only 20% parrots had this ring around them, then there's a possibility that there are close to 200 parrots. Okay, just an approximation, I'm telling you, like blind approximation. So, like there should be 200 or a value close to 200. Okay, of course it is going to be less because first you captured 30 parrots, put a ring around them and then you captured 40 out of which only 8 had them. So that is 8, 8 of 40 is what, 20%. Alright, but I mean if you take the highest possible value, it will be equal to 200. So it will be somewhere just 
you know, close to 200 or just less than 200 basically. So if you look at the options over here, 70 does not make sense at all. 100 also does not make sense at all. So basically you have eliminated two options. Now over here, these two options are very, very close. So this is where I would say you can take a leap of faith and, you know, go for an answer because CSI net, like I said, there are four marks for the correct answer and uh, sorry, four, not four, for uh, general aptitude, it is two marks for the correct answer and 0 0.5 for a negative. Okay. So over here, you can consider taking the leap of faith. <laughs> that is up to you. But this is actually a good guess. Okay. It's not an approximation because you have been able to eliminate two options for sure. Now among these two options, because these are very close, you have to take a good guess. But sometimes what happens, this might be 150 and this might be, let's say 250. So from here, you can say the correct answer would be option number two. So that is actually a very good guess. So even though you do not know the actual equation to solve this question, yet you can approximate the answer and come to the right conclusion. Okay. So that is what I consider as a good guess. And then the third, that is things to avoid. So always, like I said, subjective questions are open to interpretation. Now, I'm not saying you have to completely avoid them. Okay. You have to completely avoid them. I'm not saying that. It's just that these questions, see numerical type of questions, what happens, you will be able to solve within one and one and a half minute. Okay. But when it comes to questions like these over here, interpretation questions, first of all, are more likely that you might make a mistake in a hurry. And secondly, they might take more, more time also. Like see numerical type of questions you will solve in, let's say one, one and a half minute or two minutes, but in the end you will be able to solve. Okay. By having a look at the question, you will come to know. But when it comes to interpretation questions, you might, you know, um, you can say uh, engage in them and later on you might not come to the right conclusion also or you might not be able to solve at all. So that will create a big issue, right? So that is why these questions, when I'm, uh, when I'm having a less time on my hands, I will avoid these questions. If you have more time, like I said, if you have half an hour to do general aptitude questions, okay, uh, if, um, for a CSI net or gate exam, then of course you can attempt those questions, but initially try and avoid them. So let's say if you have 10 minutes, try and avoid the interpretation questions. Or even if you're trying to attempt the question, set up a cutoff that within first one minute, I should be able to solve. If I'm not able to solve within the first one minute, I will move to the next question. But my recommendation would be uh, honestly to first solve the numerical questions and then come to the interpretation based questions. All right. So anyway, I hope um, you found this video helpful. And uh, again, like I said, if you have certain doubts, if you want to ask me something or, uh, you know, you want to practice more questions. So I'm having a two hour class. Uh, again, I'm not sure if the time is 9.30 or 9 p.m. Uh, quite embarrassing, but um, I will I will post over here uh, whatever is the timing. I think it should be 9 p.m., not 9.30 p.m. All right. And this is the unlock code. It's a free class. You can you just use the code SETHI. It's on an academy. The link is in the description. All right. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video very soon. Hey guys, so I'm a verified educator on Unacademy and along with that, I'm also available on the Unacademy Plus platform where I'm taking live classes along with other educators. So in case you're interested in attending the live classes, you can subscribe to the Unacademy Plus platform using my referral code that is SETHI SETI and that will give you 10% discount. All right. And in case you're not interested in attending the live classes, you can watch the free courses that are available on the Unacademy. For that, all you need to do is go to the Unacademy website or download the Unacademy learning app and search my name over there. That is Ace Haiti. Once you do that, you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the Unacademy platform. All right.